In this video, we're going to conduct a very subjective experiment to determine whether or not there's any taste difference between a wine that's not been pasteurized versus one that's been pasteurized at 140 degrees for several minutes, as opposed to one that's been pasteurized at 165 degrees for 15 seconds. This experiment was recommended by a viewer, Femi Stokelist. Now, normally I don't do recommendations, but since this one doesn't cost me anything, I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. So what I'm going to do now is, first of all, is that I've got still a batch of apple wine that's still in the carboy. I need to do a final hydrometer reading so I know how much alcohol content is actually in this batch of wine, back sweeten it to my own personal taste. I then need to rack it into the bottles, and then I need to get them either into the stove or into the oven. Now, although I do have a standalone video on the process of back sweetening your wine or meats, I am going to use the simplest method, and that's simply to add in sugar in small amounts until I get to a sweetness that I like. If you choose to make sure sugar in solution before adding it in, feel free. I'm not mad at you. Normally, I use a funnel for this, and this little three ounce Dixie cup usually works quite well for me in terms of that in the hole, adding a very small increments. Another aspect of doing it this way is that if your wine or meat should need degassing, well, this, this will help take care of that as well. Now for the 165 degree method of pasteurization, first thing I want to do is I want to put a plate on the bottom of my pan because I don't want the bottle touching the bottom of it. That might cause problems like a busted bottle. And following that, using this regular lukewarm tap water, just go ahead and start filling that up. And in the meantime, let me remove this label for the time being. Just put that somewhere else. That ought to be good enough. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn the heat on to about medium. And while it's doing that, I've got an in, I've got an instant read thermometer that I've sanitized the probe. It's what I normally use, and it's set for 165, which is now set for 165. Let's just put that off to the side and wait for that to come up to temperature. All right, let's go ahead and turn off the stove. And let's give this a good 15 seconds. Yeah, we can take this out. And let that come down to real temperature. Okay, for the 140 degree Fahrenheit method, we're gonna try and do it a little bit different. We're gonna start out the same by putting a plate in our pot to make sure that our wine bottle doesn't touch the bottom. Go ahead and insert our wine bottle. Go ahead and begin filling up our pot. And before we go any higher, let me remove the label, put it someplace where I can get to it. And again, this is just room temperature tap water. I don't need it warm or hot or anything like that.
And with that having been done, we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven. Go ahead and close that. All right, it would be great if my oven could be set to 140 degrees. My problem would be solved, but unfortunately, it only goes down and down and down. to 170 degrees. So that means that I'm going to use the instant read thermometer and when it gets to 140 degrees, I'm going to pretty much just kind of turn the oven off and see if I can moderate the temperature that way for at least 30 minutes. Now I've seen it as short as 20 minutes and I've seen it as long as an hour, but we're, we're going to go for 30 minutes for the purposes of this experiment. So with that having been said, start has been pre pressed. And we go ahead and insert the thermometer, which I should have done earlier. And I've got the thermometer set for 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I still want to maintain this temperature for the next 30 minutes. And we can go ahead and take this out of the pot. Set it off to the side. Don't need the probe anymore. And we can let this come down to room temperature. Okay, for those of you who have skipped through all of the preceding video just to get to this part here, well, this is the part right here where we're gonna go ahead and test this out. All right, we have our unpasteurized bottle here. We have our pasteurized at 140 degrees for about 30 minutes. And we have our 165 for roughly 15 seconds, which is my standard method for pasteurization. We're going to find out if there's any taste difference between them. Uh, this is a batch of apple wine, which I kind of hated to have to donate for this video, but there we go. I'll find some way to make these three bottles last. Uh, three empty wine glasses and a glass of clean filtered water. Um, so without uh, dragging this out any longer than need be, uh, let's start out with the unpasteurized version first. God, wait a minute. Just doesn't have the same sound as a, as a cork <laughs> being pulled out of it. But uh, starting with the last glass first. Cat back on. Now I should say in all honesty that of the five bottles that uh, I produced out of that batch, uh, the fifth bottle came up a little bit short. It only came up to about right here. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and, and give that one a try yesterday. Uh, pretty much finished the whole bottle. So um, uh, I know what this one tastes like. But it's still a comparison between the three, so here we go. This was actually a pretty decent batch of apple wine. Still has a hint of sharpness. Uh, normally, I like to let my wines age at least 12 months. Uh, this one, I think, was nine, 10 months, a bit early. Um, but uh, definitely has a nice, clean, crisp taste. The uh, thing about the apple wines is that they have nice, full flavor. And not like a lot of my wines where it kind of like there is some flavor there. It's kind of a hint of flavor. This is like you got a full flavored apple wine here. <laughs> oh, definitely enjoy that one. Going to have to start another batch. Uh, following that will be the wine that was pasteurized low and slow. We can give that a shot. It's 
Really? Normally, when I swirl it, it's not so much to release the aromas, but... Okay, just making sure. There is a bit of softness involved there. Double check, make sure. I think I'm going to enjoy this video. <laughs> Definitely has a sharp, sharp taste to it. The unpasteurized version. Again, the 140. It softened it just a bit. Um, yeah, it's not quite as sharp or as crisp is the unpasteurized version. Yeah. There's definitely a, a noticeable difference. I mean, there's still, so far, I mean, the 140 degree pasteurization is still a very nice drinkable wine. Uh, just not as crisp as the unpasteurized version. Now, with that having been said, Try my standard 165 degree pasteurization. Really? Really, the 140 is not as crisp as the 165, comparing the 165 to the unpasteurized version. Okay, uh, the 165 is not as crisp as the as the unpasteurized version. I think I did an, uh, another video when I was tasting uh, two different meats, uh, uh, where I did an unpasteurized versus a pasteurized version, and I'm seeing the same results here. What I'm surprised is that the 140 version. Yes, I'm drinking tonight. <laughs> The 140 version. Yum. The 140 version again just isn't as crisp as the uh, as the 165, and it's really not that much of a difference between the 165. Well, I won't say it. there is a difference. It is it is a softer. It's not quite as crisp as the ones as the unpasteurized version, but yeah, all in all, um, it does appear that cooking it low and slow will soften the wine. I don't know about meads, but I'll I'll just simply say probably the same thing with meads. It will soften uh, the taste uh, quite a bit. Yep, there's definitely a noticeable difference between 140 and the 165. Uh, there is a difference between the one, uh, the unpasteurized, and again the 165, but it's not as much. If I to, if I to characterize it, the fingers, 
uh, unpasteurized, you got basically full flavor. Uh, the 165, you're losing a little bit of that crispness. The flavor's still there, but uh, the, the, you're losing a little bit of that crispness. With the 140, you're losing quite a bit more. Uh, it was actually more difficult, even though I, I was using the oven method, uh, to try and keep a relatively constant temperature. It kind of varied between the 140 and 144, so it was, it was a lot of give and take and trying to mess around with that for 30 minutes versus letting it go up for, for 60, uh, 15 seconds. Uh, this is an easier pasteurization method, in my opinion, the way I do it, uh, than trying to mess around with the 140, um, uh, whether it's on the stove or in the stove or in the oven, uh, to pasteurize your wine. Now, it should be said that since this channel does not eat this to make sure I was recording. Uh, since this channel does not use uh, uh, sulfites uh, or stabilizers to uh, 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 prevent re-fermentation from reoccurring, uh, since these wines were back sweetened, I'm not concerned about re-fermentation re uh, starting up in these two, in the 140 and 165. Uh, if I let this sit out, then more than likely this probably will begin re-fermenting and fermentation, again, fermentation will begin. So, uh, these, uh, I'm not too concerned about. I can actually put a cork in it. Bring the levels up with my last remaining bottle. <laughs> I still need to pasteurize. Uh, with my, uh, bring the levels up, cork them, label them, um, put them in the, uh, put them in the, uh, wine closet. Uh, as far as this one is concerned, I mean, I could go through that the, the effort of pasteurizing this along with that uh, last remaining um, uh, bottle of apple wine, but more than likely, I'll just drink this one between today and tomorrow. I'll call it a day. Uh, that would give me at least three bottles left. Uh, again, uh, again, that's uh, that's my assessment. Again, it's totally subjective. It's based on my taste buds. Your taste buds may vary, but just to give you a heads up. Uh, nice and crisp. Crisp. There is some crispness there, but. Yep, there is some crispness there, but it's definitely a, a, a softer uh, tasting wine. They're all drinkable. <laughs> they all will get drunk, but uh, that's, that's my opinion. So, to wrap this up, if you like what you see here, uh, please click on that like and subscribe button. Uh, memberships are always welcome. Patreons are always welcome. Uh, to help support this channel out. And uh, I'll probably take a little break from doing videos for the next uh, week or two. And then I'll get back to the uh, get back to uh, uh, giving you guys more videos. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.